I want to start off with saying that there will be some fake but realistic blood in this video. So if, uh, if that's not really your thing, then you have been warned. So this is um, my Halloween doll for the year. And I'm gonna say more about the theme at the end of the video. But for now I'm gonna say that it's trash. For this custom I'm gonna use the operetta for the first time. And the first thing I did after taking off their head was sanding down her tattoos, as I had other plans for them and her scars. I did end up leaving some of the paint, but it's it's not gonna be important in, in the end. I made her dress out of doggy bags since they are miniature trash bags. And I just glued it directly to the doll, because I'm not even gonna try to sew in that. And you will see the lights shift a little, because I didn't have a lamp at the start of the video, but I did get one soon uh, later on. So the trash I'm using is mostly from my local beach. I'm not going to use all of it, but at least it's not at the beach anymore. So there are all kinds of stuff that I can use for my doll. The decorating was kind of easy this time, actually, because I didn't need to sew anything, and I could be as messy as I needed. And the only thing on the dress I didn't pick up is the doggy bag itself, so the actual dress, but all the decoration is from the ground. And for the shoes, I used factory ones, and I painted them with some Citadel paints. They're used for miniatures, and I'm in love with them. So I used Kestlax bronze over a black base, and Nah... Nahilak... Nahilak... Nahilak Oxide? Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't get a footage of me using the Oxide one, but I'll link a video um, on how to use it in the description. You can also dry brush the Castlex bronze over black to highlight the raised edges for like a different weathered look. And finally starting on the face. I ended up sketching with a pink instead of, of my usual brown, so it doesn't show that well up on camera. And I did draw the eyes a different this time, instead of making them the same. I made the eye to right droop down, as I wanted this eye to look more dead and zombie-like. Since I normally throw the factory hair away, I decided to keep it on this time. So the eyebrows are going to be red and black, like the hair. And again, I wasn't that worried about them being symmetrical. I started lightly with the blushing, but I will end up uh, just penciling in the lips in the end anyway. But for the eyes, there isn't really a nice red in the soft pastel kits I'm using. So I had to bust out my other pastels, and all my materials are in the description as always.
I ended up using a lot of the red of the scars. And she did look like a burn victim for quite a time. And I didn't clean my palette before scraping off the pastels to use. So the color is a bit patchy, but the um, changing colors did really help the effect a ton. After the red for the eyeshadows, I went in with a black. And the red helped getting a nice transition between the black and the pink skin. But it works with other colors too. I do have a Venus with black eyeshadow, where I used a bright pink as the transition. So they don't always have to match the skin tone at all. I built up the black and red until I was happy before starting on the eyes. Because I didn't want them black mudding them up and giving me even more work to do. And finally starting on the eyes themselves, I darkened the sketch lines a little with black. As nothing else would show up over the black eyeshadow. I also drew in some uh, uh, wrinkles under the bad eye. The natural lips weren't working for me, so I filled them up with a red pencil. And I finally got to the painting. I needed a pop of a different color, so I went with blue eyes this time. I didn't seal after adding some white pencil to the eyes, so the color ended up a lot lighter at first, but it did help on the bad eye. I also didn't want the whites of the bad eye to be completely white, so I mixed in a little red and blue for a cold pale pink. After sealing the face, I built up the eye colors along with the whites and the shadows.
I decided to try out something new, and I grabbed my black watercolors. I watered it down quite a bit and gave the effect of running makeup. And it worked super well, and it even gave the, that dark edge that real running makeup actually has. So I'm wondering if I can make an entire face up with just watercolor paints. The top eyeliner ended up as saying happy accident. I went a little bit off track and it gave me the idea to draw the line further down to my to make the eyes even droopier. Drawing on the pupils and highlights are much easier when there's just one eye to focus on. And I really wanted this eye to pop in a way that contrasted the bad one. I also highlighted the rest of the face, which is something I wish I did more of in general. I've never really highlighted anything more than the eyes before, other than my tropical doll. So I need to change that since I'm really liking the highlighted look more. The thin ring around the pupil also adds a lot, I think.
In fear of cracking stuff, I put the head on the body again off camera and added her a trash halo. After some shimmer and highlights, I started to glue on some more glitter to the good eye. I added the stars first, but I changed my mind about it and um, changed it out for a blue iridescent one. And for the bad eye, I just added some shimmer before glossing both of the eyes and the lips. I thought I filmed this, but I'm in love with Citadel's Blood for the Blood God. It's such a super nice blood paint for miniatures. It looks so wet and sticky when dried, and the color is perfect. And I covered the arm that had tattoos with it, along with a few drips on the face. And to cover the scars, I mixed a blend of mostly black glitter with some red and iridescent ones with glue. Mixing it with glue is so much better than pouring the loose glitter over the glue. There's so much glitter that goes down the drain, and I really don't want that. So this keeps it much cleaner, and the glitter doesn't get... Well, it doesn't go loose and later on, as it's sealed in. And it doesn't lose any of its shine either. I just used a silicone tool to cover all of the scars. I also added it up the hair and a little down the arm. I did add two layers of this, as it wanted to drip down when I added too much. And just be careful around your joints if you're going to do this, or something similar. For the rest of my hair, I just covered it with the watered down glue to match the texture of the glitter hair. And it's just to make sure that the hair doesn't move and and it makes it look like really greasy and dirty as well. And once the glue had dried, I finally had my Halloween doll. So, as I said, I was going to talk more about the theme at the end. And yeah, the theme is trash, but it's not just any trash. It's trash that came from my local beach and stuff I found on the ground on my daily walks and those are not places that trash belongs to I did make the stand out of trash too even though the cat is from home but the rest isn't and as sad as it team is I did have a lot of fun working on the doll and I really do suggest to try it out yourself just make sure I wear gloves and for the stuff you don't use make sure you, that you dispose of it in the correct way and when thinking of ocean themes one doesn't really think of trash and it really shouldn't be something you think of when you hear ocean so if you're gonna do this as well pl please tag me on instagram and please remember to wear gloves and wash everything you're using properly and if you're younger please ask an adult as well to accompany you before handling trash because you never know where it's been and what what might be on it. This doll is my second Halloween doll. And last year's dolls also came from the sea, so maybe next year's doll will also be something ocean themed. I'm gonna think about that.